Do you want a fully customized wedding invitation suite? Well, we have a great place for you to go. It's called Minted. It has independent artists from around the world where you can get custom designs. You can get a whole suite from save the dates to your thank you notes. <laughs> and you can get free address printing. Just go to from ringdevail.com slash minted. Shannon. And I'm Kim. And you are listening to From Ring to Bell, a wedding planning podcast where we share tips and information to help you plan the wedding of your dreams without all the stress. Adventure Destination Weddings, episode number 114. Are you subscribed to the show? Well, don't miss a show. Subscribe to From Ring to Bell anywhere you listen to podcasts. And if you don't know how, let us know and we will help you out. We are continuing our Destination Wedding series with guest hosts Johnny and Elsie Storm of NoMoreBoringWeddings.com. Together they consult couples in planning destination weddings and they do a little life and couple coaching. They successfully plan their own destination wedding adventure and are here today to give us some expert advice on how to plan yours. Welcome, you guys. Hi, thank hey. you. Yeah, thanks. First of all, before we even start anything, I want to say, or I want to ask you, what's an adventure destination wedding? I've not heard that before. It's, you know, I, I think a lot of people look at destination weddings and, and they think about, um, immediately they think about like going to the beach or, or something like that. And we're all in favor of that. Absolutely. I think that's great. And if that's what um, people really like, then go for it. What we want to do and what we see as uh, incorporating adventure into it is like taking the location that you're going to and finding um, excursions, cultural experiences, things that integrate more of the local, um, the local culture and, and like what they have to offer that's really fun and integrating that as part of the whole experience so that you can create sort of an experience as opposed to just, um, or, or as, as opposed to just like a standard vacation, if you will. So we're, we really want to um, entice people to take a, uh, you know, what could be a few days lying on the beach and getting outside of the hotel walls and, and stuff like mm -hmm. that and seeing what the country has to offer. Okay, that, that's a little clearer now. <laughs> you know, just, just to start off the bat to tell our, our listeners what an adventure destination wedding is. Um, so we usually ask you guys to give us a little bit of your story, how you got to where you are. You want to share that with us? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, well, I guess you can start because it was originally you start. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. So our background is, um, I used to live in Latin America. I worked for an organization. It was a service learning volunteer abroad organization. And, um, and that's actually how we met. Uh, she came down as a volunteer, uh, in Belize. And so we met that way. And then she started working for the same organization. And part of the, um, Part of the uh, things that the organization did was run group programs internationally that were volunteer-based, and we would work on projects and things like that. And so the the organization was had sites in about 15 different countries, and we got really good at running groups, group programs around the world, in, in a lot of different um, a lot of different countries, a lot of different style of, of countries, and a lot of different types of groups. And so when we got married, you know, Belize is just a country that we kept coming back to many, many years. We met in 2008 there, and pretty much every year we've been back. We have, you know, a family there, basically. And when we were thinking about getting married, nothing really felt right. You know, we were thinking about Colorado, Minnesota, which is where she's from. I'm from Connecticut. None of those really sat well with us. And when we thought about Belize, it like really hit that spot within us that was that felt right. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we decided to, you know, make an adventure out of it. We wanted 
everyone, all of our friends and family to experience the Belize that we knew and loved and to, you know, experience everything that Belize had to offer. So we decided to put, you know, take the skills that we learned in um, running these group programs and apply it to an adventure destination wedding. So we, what a great idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. And, and the week of our wedding was just incredible. Um, we, you know, we felt like it was the best week of our lives, but we also had many guests saying that it was the best week of our, their lives. We had a lot of guests who had never gotten a passport before, who had never gone abroad, who really just opened their mind and their horizons to this whole new world. And when we got back, to the U.S., people were talking about our wedding. We had a lot of people saying, wow, you know, we heard you guys had this incredible trip, and I would love to do that, but I would never know where to start, and that feels mm-hmm. too overwhelming, and I don't know what to do. And Johnny and I, because we're kind of the, you know, quote-unquote experts in leading trips in this, we thought, well, what do you mean you don't know where? It's so easy, da 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 And we <laughs> oh, it's not that easy for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> we could come together and teach people and empower people how to how to do this, and um, and then also take our a, another piece of our background is we both um, have recently gotten master's degrees in spiritual psychology. Um, I'm a full time life coach. Johnny does some coaching as well on the side, and we thought, how could we also take this, you know, what we've learned through coaching, and help people not only plan you know, an adventure destination wedding, but also do it and like stay in love throughout the process because yes. it's very stressful. <laughs> um, how to, you know, handle conflict that arises throughout mm-hmm. the planning of it. Um, manage stress. Manage stress and, and also, you know, relate really well with your guests and all the people who have all the opinions and da 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 da. So we're bringing kind of all of that together in this and, um, it's been really, it's been really fun. It's kind of a passion project. It's just bringing all of our passions together into one, and yes. here we are. So, <laughs> yeah, it sounds like quite an adventure so far. Yeah, <laughs> it's true that it has been. <laughs> <laughs> so, why would one want to have an adventure wedding? Well, I think it's for someone who is looking to. I mean, similar, somewhat similar to Johnny and I, looking to like bring their passions into their wedding, into the start of their marriage and their life together. Um, it's for the couple who is already adventurous, who already loves to mm-hmm. get outside, to, you know, sometimes be a little bit outside of the norm. Um, and for people who also, like, it made us feel so alive, just planning it and being there, and our guests felt so alive. So, it could also be for people who are just looking for, you know, more aliveness, more adventure, more fun, and to mm-hmm. start their life with that together as a mm-hmm. married couple. It was so, you know, so wonderful for us um, and and for our guests to be able to really share and support and that as well was a sweet experience. Yeah, and, and there's, a, there's a lot of, I, I would say, a lot of benefits to having a destination wedding that might not be uh, that might not be available if you were to do one locally. Like a lot of times, if you have a local des- uh, a local wedding, um, you know it's it's a couple of days and people can come in, you know, from out of town for sure. But it, it tends to be whirlwind and there's so much going mm-hmm. on. Yeah. And, yeah. and the bride and groom are like so focused on ev- you know getting everything right that they really don't have a ton of time to spend with their guests and, and, and whatnot. I've heard that a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like all of a sudden it starts and then it's over and then, you know, you do the dance and you eat the cake and then, like, all your guests leave. and <laughs> <laughs> Right. It, and that's how it is. Yeah, it is how it is. And so one of the things that we loved about our wedding was that we had, like, this extra time to spend with our guests and really enjoy you know, having all of them uh, in Belize with us. We had a few days before the wedding, and then we had a few days after the wedding as well. And we, it was this awesome opportunity for us to, like, really enjoy it with them. We would go on the adventures with a bunch of them and mm-hmm. uh, have a ton of fun. And then the wedding came, and then, you know, we um, 
Well, I guess we can probably get into this later, but we had our wedding. Uh, it was a week long, and we divided it into two, and the first half was in the jungle, and the second was on an island, uh, you know, sort of the beachy, more, uh, as- you know, chill mm-hmm. aspect of it, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> and um, some people chose to leave after the wedding, and a good chunk of people chose to stay. So um, it was an opportunity. You know, we wanted to offer uh, the wedding for as many people as possible, and, and part of that was time, part of that was money. Um, and what was really cool was we got to really enjoy everybody and spend, spend that time with them. So I think that was another uh, a really positive element of uh, having a destination wedding. I would agree. Yeah, because most people, when they have a wedding, they're ready for it to be over with mm-hmm. and leave. And <laughs> it's like, oh, right. it's, just, it's over and I want to get out of here. Yeah. Let's go yeah, do I mean, something fun. I mean. Like it wasn't <laughs> fun, but yeah. Totally. That sounds really nice. <laughs> it is. It really it was, does. It was such a, it was, it wasn't exactly unexpected, but, but the, um, but in a way it was because we weren't really mm-hmm. planning for that. And um, it also gave all of our guests an opportunity to bond and come together and really in, enjoy each other. And um, and that was another huge bonus of, of the, the destination wedding. Right. And it's also mm-hmm. a time where you get to spend a week with like all your favorite people in the world, right? <laughs> yeah. To play with them and do adventures with them. And, and that was so fun. And it's also like you brought both of your families together, probably. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm assuming. Or you could... And and everybody gets to know each other yeah. on a different level than just oh hi we're here for the the wedding right kind of thing yeah absolutely because travel really brings people together yeah in a way mm-hmm. that I don't think anything else does and so people really created this experience together our families you know created experience like my brother and his sister had never met and like oh. like they're like this you know uh, <laughs> so it's just fun. Yeah, that's cool. it was it was so cool because we had, you know, all these different groups of friends from different parts of our lives, different times in our lives, uh, home, you know, Minnesota and Connecticut and then Peru and Belize and and different travels and things like that that had never really come together in a meaningful way, mm-hmm. if at all. And so all of a sudden, like all these people from our lives came together and, you know, when after the wedding was over, like, they all became Facebook friends and they were <laughs> walls. And, and I was like, wait, how do you know? It? Oh, that's right. Oh, cool. It was so cool. Like, yeah. It, it was really fun to see now all of our friends coming together and becoming friends. That's that's I mean, like right there, that's like the, the number one reason why why you should do it. <laughs> if, if I was listening to this and I was planning my wedding, I'd be like, man, I want that. Yeah. That's what I want. So let's, let's get into how our listeners can do that. Where do they even start? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> you go, no, you go. <laughs> I think, I think the first, the first place is really taking a step back and thinking about like, what do you want your wedding to look like? Like there's this piece that we do a lot in coaching of this visualizing of what is it that you want? What's really important to you, right? Um, Johnny mentioned earlier when we were thinking of where we wanted to get married, it was like getting married in Colorado just didn't feel right, but Belize did. So, so I think that's really the first step is like you and your partner getting super clear on what is it that you want and where do you want to go and what, like one thing that I asked my um, clients a lot when they're in the middle of a decision is like, does it feel heavy or light? Right. So for us, like this feeling, getting married in Colorado feel heavier, light. Well, it felt heavy, but Belize felt light, even though Belize was way more work. Right. The right. energy behind it felt light. It felt fun. It felt exciting. So we went with that line of energy. And in that, we just created everything off of that. So that would be step one is like getting clear on that piece. And then, um, and then I think the second step is, is really like, If you decide to have a destination wedding, um, looking at what country do you want to go to, right? Like Mm -hmm. where, you know, what place really excites you? And do you want to get married in the beach, in the jungle, on a mountain? 
English countryside. <laughs> For example, I, I just saw um, uh, an article in the, uh, in the news the other day about um, avid skiers getting married at the top of a mountain on skis, and then when they're down, uh-huh. they skied away down the mountain. It's <laughs> <laughs> their personality. That right. who they are. And that's really what we're advocating. Like, where is it in the world that would fit you uh, as individuals and as a couple? Mm-hmm. And that's really what we're, we're, we're what we're meaning with that, right? And then, mm-hmm. and then in that, it's like looking at why does that feel so important to you? Because ultimately, you're most likely going to get pushback from family or friends or whoever of, oh, really? You're doing, you know, a destination wedding. <laughs> most people are going to be excited you're going to get some pushback. We definitely did. Sure. And we had to really hold within that piece of like, why is this important to us? Why is this important to who we are as a couple? Why do we really want this experience? And keep coming back to like that. This is our truth. And we can't please everybody. Right. So we had to just do what felt, what felt really right, right for us. And our why, of why we wanted to get married and believe was, um, that it just felt so right. It felt so important to us, and we're so excited to share this with everyone else, and that kept us moving. And, and, and to be clear, you know, the idea is not to shun everybody and, and to be like, oh, you can't make it? Well, too bad for you or right, something right, like that. Right. Like we, we did make phone calls and, and called friends and family, and we are like, look, th- you know, we're thinking about this. This feels really good to us, and if this were to be the case, like, do you think you'd be open to that idea? Mm-hmm. Because it just, it also felt important for us to not be these, you know, staunch, like this is what we're doing. You're either in or mm-hmm. out sort of thing. Like that's not how we wanted to, to do it. Um, we weren't, we didn't want to make the decisions based on other people's um, interest or ability necessarily, but we also wanted to make sure that it was possible. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So go through some of the logistics of taking all your friends and family all the way to Belize. You know? <laughs> well, what, I think one of the one of the first steps is to determine when when you want to go, when makes the most sense, because you have to take into consideration a few things. Uh, you know, your own schedule, you, uh, the schedules of family and friends and, and things like that, but also the schedule of the location. Are there going to be any like major festivals that might be, you know, in the way or 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 some or creating making it more complicated or more expensive or whatever the case may be? Um, so really, kind of paying attention to your own holidays in in your country and then mm-hmm. the holidays and and whatnot and the weather and things like that in the in the host country. Yeah, it's it's important and even to the fact of like. We saw someone post on Facebook the other day that she was planning a destination wedding in Hawaii, and, like, all of these things were going wrong. It was over Father's uh-huh. Day, and people didn't want to come, and and there was something with, you know, just like... Like a local festival a local was going on. Festival and, was going on, and we were like, oh, if you had just read our book. <laughs> 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 and so it seemed like a little thing, but it, it reinforced for us like how many problems she was having because they just kind of chose a date instead of really looking at everything that falls into a date when you are traveling, when you are asking your guests to travel, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you know, getting married over Christmas or something probably wouldn't be the best time to plan a destination mm-hmm. wedding, for example. Um, and in that, you're never going to find the best dates, but that's, that's one is like, as you're choosing the date for your wedding to, to really take into consideration, um, some of the points that Johnny, Johnny listed there. Mm -hmm. And then I think the, the second piece of like, as we're getting into the logistics is also like the, what are the types of adventures that you guys want to have? What are the experiences? Like, so much of this is all about creating clarity before you can even do the the like logistical piece of that and and being clear of like this is the experience we're going for so that when you're calling hotels when you're looking for staff which we can talk about how to do that in a minute um, that are going to help you that you have a clear idea of what you're asking for so that you make sure that you're getting the right the right location, the right place, the right people who are going to help you. Um, 
And that's a big piece is that we get asked all the time. It's like, okay, well, how the heck do I get people to help me who are in another country? Like, how do we even right. find people to do this? Well, I, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of wedding planners all over the world, um, mm-hmm. and a lot of hotels have people that do that as well that you can tap into. Um, and then if so that, I think that's where I would start. You know, if, if you're working specifically with a hotel, a lot of hotels do wedding stuff and they're, they're pretty good at, at handling a lot of this. Mm-hmm. Um, so if, uh, if you can't find someone like that or someone just not clicking or it feels too expensive or, or uh, whatever the case may be, then try and see if you have any friends who have connections or contacts in the local country. Maybe they visited the country, maybe they've spent time or even lived there, and they have connections on the ground that they could put you in touch with uh, to have a conversation with and and start, you know, talking about potential logistics and things like that. Yeah, and I just want to add to that. I I think that's such a key piece of just putting on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, hey, you guys, we're thinking of getting married in Mexico in, you know, this place. Who has connections and contacts there? People love to help you and love to use their connections and support. We do it for people all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, And and that's a piece. So that can be so helpful is using, like, a friend of a friend. Um, And a lot of times you get, like, this awesome hookup. Or or they know someone (laughs) that's gotten married in that location before or, you know, whatever the case may be. Like, I was talking to someone the other day who – uh, went to Costa Rica to get married, and then he, someone else was interested in getting married, and they connected, and so, you know, this guy put the other one in contact with his, his original contact, and you know, it just goes from there. So you, you never know who who has um, who has contacts. Yeah. And then uh, beyond that, if you can't find anybody, then you can reach out to like local study abroad offices at universities or, or something like that. Different companies or, or offices um, that work internationally or have connections internationally and just pick their brain a little bit. You know, this is what I'm thinking, um, you know, not to step on any toes or anything like that, but could you point me in the right direction? Is there mm-hmm. someone that you could point me in the right direction to that I can start a conversation with? Mm-hmm. I know you said put it out on Facebook, but there are a ton of wedding planning groups from all over the world. If you can find a group of people planning weddings wherever it is that you want to go, I bet that would be a huge resource. Huge. Totally. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're just, we just offered the put it out on Facebook just in case someone has a low budget and they mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. maybe they don't have the budget for a wedding planner, though they yeah. are very helpful. Yes, that's our one main advice. (laughs) You know, our one piece of advice that we always give almost every podcast Mm -hmm. is you need some kind of day of coordinator or a planner to help you. you Yeah. Get everything organized. They help with stress, conflict, all unexpected details, all the things. Having a point person on the ground is key. Yeah. Regardless Mm -hmm. of what their role is, if they're just at the hotel or if they're specifically, you know, the wedding person at the hotel or a separate wedding planner whatever the case may be. We, we worked very closely with the owner of the hotel uh, where we got married mm-hmm. and um, you know, he wasn't a wedding planner, but he had done a few weddings there and, and he was mm-hmm. just like insanely helpful. Yeah. Um, we were at Cotton Tree Lodge a- in Belize in the jungle and it was just, yeah, he was so helpful. So, so you've mentioned um, integrating the local culture and doing things that, that people there do. Mm-hmm. How do you even figure that out if you've never been there? Well, uh, there's a ton of research you can do online. I mean, I think that would be my my first and foremost place to go. Just start researching online. Um, And uh, And then I would would talk to the hotels. So when you decide where you're going to go, say, you know, we really want to incorporate culture into maybe it's a ceremony, into the cocktail hour, into our reception, whatever. What ideas do you have? And let them, you know, bring up some ideas and also say, we're interested in offering some cultural excursions to our guests. What are different cultural excursions 
that you have in your country. And they'll be able to come up with a bunch of ideas as well. And then um, if you have the resources and the time to be able to go and visit the location, even if it's just for a quick three-day trip um, before you get married, we highly suggest it. I think there's a lot of value in being able to go see the place, get to meet different people, maybe check out some of the local markets and say, ooh, this would be a really fun favor to include, <laughs> or I'd love to like get these as little guest gift bags and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, because the more that that you can know ahead of time, the easier it's going to be to just be able to see it and plan it. And for what we did was we incorporated local culture into almost everything we did, from the welcome bags that we had that were all – um, everything in them was from Belize, including the bag was handmade um, by a woman in Belize, to the, you know, party favors, to just everything. We tried to really support the locals as well so that they, you know, got a little kickback from, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our, our wedding group. And um, we figured a lot of that out when we went down. We went down for three days and just, like, planned the heck out of everything. <laughs> um, and it was so worth it for just for our knowledge to be able to see this place with a wedding in mind, to be able to get to meet people. And ultimately, it ended up saving a lot of money, I think, because we would have otherwise tried to buy different things here in the States and bring down gift bags or welcome bags or whatever. Mm -hmm. And instead, we got like the most amazing, incredible gifts for really cheap because we bought them mm -hmm. from you know, the locals and the markets. And I think it was much more unique and really fun. And we figured all that out um, beforehand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think something that you would have to do, if especially if you're an American going somewhere else, um, you might have to let go of some of the traditional things, yes. like the, you know, four-tiered wedding cakes yes. and stuff, if you want to bring that local mm -hmm culture into the wedding. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, a lot of, I think what we're promoting is a step outside of the traditional sort of mm -hmm. wedding structure. Obviously, you know, keep whatever you want, and but some things might not be possible there. And if they are and you want to include them, then great, you know. But we're certainly uh, advocates of, of stepping outside of the norm um, if, if that's something that you want. And that's part of, you know, incorporating the travel and, and, and things like that and culture. You know, um, before we get, got married, I was looking online and I found a list of, of uh, traditional wedding customs in, in like 100 different countries uh -huh. uh, just to see if there was, you know, a Belize one that we felt – we might be able to incorporate in, into our wedding. And it did, you know, the, the custom there, I can't remember what it was. Um, we decided that it didn't fit for us, so we didn't use it. But there, you know, there are a ton of really cool things that, mm -hmm. that people do around the world to celebrate, you know, their marriage, whether it's cultural or religious, um, that, that are distinct and, and unique. So, uh, and then, for some of our cultural excursions, like we brought people to do uh, chocolate making with a local Mayan family. Um, we were connected with uh, a local drummer that taught people how to how to drum. Um, there was a the one of the local cultures is Garifuna culture, and there's a specific dance and and music and and drumming that's um, part of that culture. And so that was one of our excursions as well for people that were interested in that. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we offered a, a number of different options. Uh, some were more adventurous and some were more cultural. Uh, one to diversify int for interests and also um, physical levels. You know, some people that were joining us might not have been able to go on the more adventurous excursion. <laughs> so we had... Yeah. <laughs> I'm not very adventurous, sorry. <laughs> but chocolate making, yeah, right? we yeah. Do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, you know, the chocolate making was very accessible to everybody, but then we had, you know, excursions into caves and swimming into caves mm. and cave exploration and jumping off waterfalls and stuff like that, <laughs> which not everybody nope. could do. But they, I'm thinking zip lining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
and and uh, and so that you know, with excursions, that's one thing we would recommend is diversifying um, the options. The options. Mm-hmm. You know, we love traditional weddings. We talk about it all the time. But how fun would it be to go to an adventure wedding where you get to do things that you've never done before and even never even thought to do, maybe? Right. I mean, it, I mean, I just love this idea. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's really um, – that's what we're promoting. We, we really – it was as much of an experience as it was for us and an incredible experience. It was also for our guests. And they got a ton mm-hmm. out of it. And that also made us feel like so good. So you mentioned earlier how you used all local people and places to get your wedding favors and stuff like that. How do you go about hiring the local help and things? Yeah, I mean, like, are there rules about all that and laws and, and paying people to do stuff? <laughs> even I, You know, that's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. I'm sure laws vary country to country, but yes. uh, the majority of them are going to be involved in some way in the tourism industry mm-hmm. or the um, hotel industry or, or something like that. So um, with regards to paying them, there shouldn't be any issue. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, again, I would say, you know, reach out to your hotel as a first step and, and start there. Um, and then any other connections that you found uh, through your digging and, and asking around and, and whatnot, um, that would be your ne- your next step, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you – and the marriage laws are different, varying countries and things like that. How do you – can you just research that and look it up online to figure out what – you know, if your marriage is legal here, is it legal in the States? How do you go about – Yeah. Because I know like in the Bahamas and things like that, you have to have another ceremony or something in the States to make it legal. Or- yeah. And, and it just, it really depends on the country for Belize. We could have gotten married quote unquote legally in Belize. We chose not to, it was an extra $500. And mm. if we ever had something legally that happened here. It may be hard to, to transfer that marriage license. Um, so we chose just to have a ceremony there. And then, um, and then we went just to the courthouse when we got back and, mm-hmm. and got married. Okay. And I don't even remember what day that was. Like, that just <laughs> come on. That wasn't important. <laughs> it was just like, it was just really going in and, you know, kind of just signing the, the right. slip of paper that made us legally married. Um, for us, it was more mm-hmm. the actual ceremony. And that was what we wanted. Um, but the hotel we got married at offered to, you know, help us with that paperwork and everything. If we oh. wanted to do that, mm-hmm. we just, for us, it just was unimportant um, of having that actual, like, marriage license from Belize. And, and it just felt way more complicated. So every country probably has different things. And mm-hmm. we would recommend just to do the research and then to think about what feels most important for the two of you in in that moment, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could go to the courthouse first and then go sure. have your yeah. adventure Absolutely. wedding. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah. just all depends. It just seems weird to me. Like you can't just go get married and then come back home and they're, they're like, well, mm, nope, it's not legal. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're married. We just got married. It just doesn't seem right, but that's, you know, laws and regulations, yeah. all that fun stuff. Um, so what if any of our listeners want to get a hold of you guys and have you help them plan their wedding? Where can they find you? Yeah, so they can go to our website, nomoreboringweddings.com, and there's a services tab. Um, and we offer a lot of different services from just consulting. If someone has, you know, a couple questions, they're like, we're in the middle of planning this or we're starting it and we don't know where to get started, we'd be super happy just to chat with you for an hour or two and support you in in that, giving you some one-on-one attention because um, sometimes that's all people need. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if, you know, people are wanting us to really like full on plan their wedding, um, we take on a couple, couples a year. Um, and you know, we would be interested in having a bigger conversation with you about if that would be a fit for you. Um, and also a lot of times when, what we found is when people get married abroad, is sometimes they're doing a different type of ceremony. Maybe they're not doing their traditional, like, religious church ceremony from back home. 
Um, and I'm a minister, and so part of what I do is help people craft really meaningful, heartfelt ceremonies for them and help them write that. And then whoever it is that's going to marry you, um, you know, in the country you're in, then you can work with them and give them that ceremony. But that's that's a really fun thing is help yeah. craft that in a way that feels really, really genuine and, and heartfelt to them. Awesome. Yeah, and and then we also uh, work with couples and like premarital or, or couples coaching. Uh, in addition to that, yeah, so. which is fun too. It's it like, is. There's so much <laughs> that comes up in premarital <laughs> right. coaching. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. I think this was very eye opening, and um, I think this is going to get a lot of people excited for uh, weddings abroad, adventure <laughs> weddings. Yeah, abroad. we hope so. Yeah. I want a destination wedding. <laughs> I want to do one in England, I think. That would be really cool. Don't you think? Uh, I guess. I just, what scares me about destination weddings is the logistics of getting people there mm-hmm. and handling everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's when you have, you need to have a really good planner. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, you do. Yeah. And I'm sure you can find one anywhere. Mm-hmm. If you have your wedding planner there, yeah, then, you, then you're okay. I, I, what I worry about is that the people that I want at my wedding will not be being able yeah. to go. And I guess you can always work things out. Yeah. And that's when you maybe you have another ceremony at home. Yeah. And say. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But how fun would it be to go somewhere and just have some adventure? It's basically a vacation mm-hmm. with a little bit of wedding <laughs> thrown in there, you know? <laughs> yes. You don't let the wedding take over. That's yes. <laughs> yes. I think that'd be great. Elsie has one more bit of information for us. To really follow your heart, to really follow with what what feels right for you. And and in that, as you're following that line of energy, it's like everything will just work out, right? And there's a lot of stories and limiting beliefs that come up when we really want something. Like maybe you really want this destination wedding and the story of it's too complicated or I don't know where to start or it's too expensive or will anybody even come or, you know, can I even pull this off? So slow down and ask yourself, wait a minute, is this true? And can I actually do this? Is it really too complicated? No. Can I find the resources that are going to support me? Yes. You can totally do this. Like what we're here is really to empower you that it's not as hard as you think. It's not typically more expensive than a wedding here in the United States. It's actually... I think a lot cheaper than uh, weddings in the States can be. Yeah, I I think that's an important point. I think there is a a misconception or a fear is probably a better way of saying it, that uh, a destination wedding is going to be a lot more expensive and it doesn't have to be. So basically what she's saying is have your wedding the way you want to have your wedding. Right. And isn't that what we've been saying? Yes, always. <laughs> well, if you'd like to support us, check out our Patreon page at fromringtovail.com slash give. Also, you can check out the show notes at fromringtovail.com slash 114. We will put links to Elsie and Johnny's website and anything else that we've mentioned. And always remember, we're open for suggestions and you can ask us questions you can email us at info at firming or hashtag on any social media firming Devel. until next time no stress no worries keep calm and listen on thank you for listening to our podcast you can find us on facebook from ring to veil on twitter at from ring to veil and on our website from ring music provided by bensound.com <laughs>